In the previous lab, we worked with analog and digital I.O. using the C library MRAA developed by Brandon LeFall from Intel Open Technology Center. It's great to use a library, even better when it's open source, but how does it work under the hood? In this lab, we'll see how we can interact with analog and digital I.O. without MRAA or any other library. You don't have to do this in real life, as it's not really convenient. But it's really important to know you can if you really have to. OK, let's go in the lab folder and launch the script. You see the same behavior as in lab 2. That's a good thing. Now let's look at the script. As often with Linux, it's a matter of finding the right file. In this case, kernel files located in slash sys clase gpio. We want to control the digital pin 7. In the kernel is gpio 27. You can get the mapping between 7 and 27, but it's in the Galileo documentation. So you write the number 27 in the export file. A folder GPIO27 is created automatically. And you write a few settings, direction, drive, and initial value. Then we want to read the, uh, from analog zero. That's GPIO37. So you write the number 37 in the export file. A folder GPIO37 is created automatically you write a setting for direction. Setup is finished. To read from analog, read this file. To write to digital, write in this file 0 or 1. That's all. It's important to reset the GPIO by unexporting the numbers you used at the beginning. OK, it was as expected, no problem. Now, that's a lot of lines. In the previous example, we had one GPIO for each I.O. On Edison, we have several for each I.O. That's because Edison and the Arduino extension board that we use today have highly configurable I.O. And you can configure GPIOs with other GPIOs with different numbers. The numbers are uh, documented. Now you see why it's nice to have a library doing the work for you.